Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today, we're doing our F1 speed compared to normal cars. I went to post this yesterday, my fault. Got home from college. But anyway, we're posting it today. It's gonna be an interesting video. One of the longer F1 videos I'm reacting to. This is eight minutes. Wow, eight minutes. Hope you guys enjoy. I'm definitely excited to check it out. Formula cars, GT cars. So it's not by actual Formula One channel, by the way. Super bikes. Different racing disciplines produce very different machines, all with different strengths and weaknesses. But how do they stack up? Which would win in a quarter mile drag race or a top speed? Race? I am genuinely or curious. I don't know this. I have you guys always bash me for NASCAR. Obviously, F1 You've being faster than NASCAR. I mean, I never said out. they were. I never so said NASCAR is faster than F1. The cars. Starting with Formula One, our benchmark. I just said they're probably up there. These cars have over a thousand horsepower and weigh around 800 kilograms. They're very light. That's obviously. But as we know, they're tuned for maximum corner speed with lots of downforce. And so this may hinder it in a straight line, but pay dividends around a lap. Next is Formula 2 with very similar weight, but with less air room. Formula 2, I didn't know it was a thing. With around 620 horsepower. Then we have is that a whole different brother, league? The Formula 3 car. This has less power, but or they, much Or they could all weight. be in the same race. Then we have IndyCar, Formula 1's American cousin. Similar in weight to a Formula 1 car, but with a bit less power. I never power. knew they were different However, cars. they are much more slippery in a straight line. I never knew that. Then we have Formula E, much less power than other Formula cars. More weight, but instant torque. These are very much designed for smaller, twisted nice. street circuits. And that's our lot for Formula cars. Next to the GTs. So we have the three classes that will be racing. I didn't even know they raced. Year. The new hypercar with a hybrid system powering all four wheels. It has around 670 horsepower. Then there's LMP2, very close behind, with 600 horsepower and similar weight. Then there are the GTE cars. Those which are nice. 550 horsepower and weigh around 1,200 kilograms. On the face of it, they look very similar to our next competitor, the GT3 car, but they're made to be extremely slippery for the long straights at Le Mans. How does somebody even get involved in this sport? A little less power than the GTEs, but have much more aero, and so might it's definitely expensive. Far off in terms of lap time. <laughs> then comes the DTM cars, the German Touring Car Championship. These are actually very similar to GTEs. What league is so we'll that? See how they stack up. Like, then we have NASCAR, which are obviously right, designed with ovals in mind, but are racing on many more road circuits in recent years. And then finally, we have MotoGP. They have incredible really touched on NASCAR. power to weight ratios, but may lose out around the corners as there's much less rubber on the road when compared to a road Those car. are cool though. I see that and all the time. first S is a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. It yeah. wraps up the car's traction, power, torque, and weight all in one test. However, most cars actually aren't great at this. For example, a modern Tesla could give a Formula One car a good run for its money. How? Race cars tend to have very small, light clutches that aren't particularly good at launching. But anyway, what do you think will win? Obviously, no one has done this combination in real life. One of the so F1 cars. Them up in the virtual world Actually, no. All of because they're not good at going straight, they said. Top. All right. The winner is actually pretty surprising. The fastest is the hypercar. It may weigh more and have the name less power out. than a Formula One car, but its hybrid system powers all four wheels, giving it incredible acceleration off the line. And another key factor is power to weight, and this is why you see the MotoGP bike doing well. It doesn't get a great start Reminds me of to reduce traction. Really on GTA Grand Theft Auto racing with these, with all these bikes, here. the so cars. Once the traction is down, nearly 1,200. NASCAR is getting destroyed. How is it to actually beat the Formula One car? Now, powerful bikes do but NASCAR is really all about to launch, but once like they're off 200 the line, the acceleration laps. is incredible. The Formula E car does really well in this test, beating many cars it's made with for much more horsepower. That situation. But that instant torque from the electric motor must make up for it. The gaps between the rest of the pack is actually really close, with the GT3 and the NASCAR bringing up the rear, as they have significantly more weight than the others in this test. For me, the most surprising is the hypercar. You would expect the power and reduced weight of the Formula One car to give it the edge. Yeah, but, but he just said that they're not going straight. That's what the hypercars are best at. Up to 200 kilometers an hour, the hypercars have the advantage in a one-on-one race. Still fast. If we let them carry on, this is where the power to weight is less of an issue, okay. and the aerodynamic drag versus power becomes a bigger part of the test. This is where the F1 car really takes over. You can see that the extra power helps it claw back the time and accelerate up to a top speed of 360 kilometers an hour. Where Reminds the me of track and field. Usually the taller uh, sprinters, they usually are better off at finishing at the end, not starting because their legs. This that was how I was in track. This is a measure of power versus drag. And at these speeds, the force produced by slicing through the air is immense. 
Also, many of these cars are tuned for lap time on short tracks, and so top speed isn't massively relevant, but it's interesting like to I see mentioned. anyway. The top speed is actually taken by IndyCar, which has less power than the Formula One car, but thanks to its very slippery body and covered rear wheels, it can reach up to 380 kilometers an hour. The MotoGP bike actually beats the Formula One car due to its much smaller frontal area punching a smaller hole in the air. It also doesn't create any downforce, something that comes with a large drag penalty. The LMP2 car beats the Formula 2 car, but more interestingly, it also beats the Hypercar, a car that is a class above it in the World Endurance Championship. I just gotta know what the kind of like, type of leagues these two classes are in. Really small this year. I never knew they even raced. The lap time difference between these two, where the Hypercar dominates the acceleration zone, but the LMP2 car is actually faster at the end of the straight. But acceleration and top speed is one thing. Lap time around a circuit is a whole different ball game. The cars I don't remember ever NASCAR looking like that. Trade -off between straight line speed I don't know if they changed their cars over the years or what. We picked Spa as the track for this battle, as the majority of cars have raced here and set representative laps in the past couple of years. And obviously Lewis Hamilton holds the lap record here from 2020. Of course he 1 does. 1 minute 41.2, which is quite clearly the fastest car here over a lap. The fastest lap in a Formula 2 car is held by Yuki Tsunoda with a 157.6, over 16 seconds slower than the Formula 1 car. And the fastest Formula 3 lap was 7 seconds slower than this with a 2 minutes 5. We also know all of the WEC times from the 6 hours of Spa this year, so let's add them in there too. DTM and GT3s have also raced this track, but what's more difficult to predict is NASCAR, MotoGP and Formula E. As many of you will know, these cars don't race this track. And so finding data for this has been really tricky. So what we've done is compare these cars using other circuits lap times. So for example, NASCAR raced at the Circuit of the Americas this year with Tyler Reddick set in a lap of two minutes 12. That's a sharp six. turn. <laughs> and then the last Formula One time was set by Charles Leclerc in 2019 with a pole time of one minute 36.1. If you work this out, it turns out to be a 28% difference. And since Kota and Spa are roughly the same in terms of having long straights as well as many slow to medium speed corners, we can apply this difference to get a NASCAR time of two minutes and nine seconds. All right, they're going into math that. Now, I this isn't know. a bulletproof estimate, but it seems to be a pretty good ballpark figure. If we do the same with MotoGP, which has raced at Red Bull Ring, we also get a 28% difference compared to Formula One, meaning we would expect NASCAR and MotoGP nice. to nice be car. very close in a race around Spa, and that will be good to watch. Now, Crazy how they like, almost touch the ground all the ones in the bike. They tend to race much shorter tracks in Formula 1, and so this guess is a little fuzzier. The Formula E and Formula 1 times around Monaco have a difference of 23%, but this being a very short stop and start track, this wouldn't be massively representative around Spa, where the long straights would punish the Formula E car. This would make the lap time around 2 minutes 4, which seems much too fast. We would probably expect around a 2 minutes 10 to 2 minutes 20. So we went looking for some more data and interestingly, Jimmy Broadbent has lapped both the Formula E cars and the Formula 1 car around the Nordschleife. Alright, you Sydney. can't use that as this track has long a video game as a and legit between, thing. And much more representative of Spa. Or maybe you could, I don't know, I don't think you could. comparison that. works out as exactly a lap time of around 2 minutes 10. Definitely a ropey estimate, but it gives us a good idea. Okay, at least he missed Formula that. Formula 1 may have beaten IndyCar on a circuit, but what would happen if the roles were reversed and they raced on an oval? click here to find out Thank interesting video watching, absolutely and we will catch you especially for a beginner week. like me well everybody that was f1 speeds compared to other cars hey definitely cool um but yeah i don't know i was i thought nascar would be a little bit more faster than that but it is what it is i guess i'm disappointed oh well uh recommend more videos though please i do have a lot i'm um, a lot of compilations a lot of races so definitely excited for the future of f1 on this channel hope you guys enjoy subscribe to my channel help me get to 6,000 subscribers i'm out guys peace